Congress is returning to Washington this week with a long priority list ahead of them. On the top of that list, a spending deal that must pass by the end of the month to avert a government shutdown. Even though leaders in the Senate and House have agreed on a stopgap bill, some House Republicans are threatening to hold things up if cuts to, come, uh, cuts to some programs aren't made first. And joining me now is Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky. Congresswoman, thanks for spending part of your Sunday with us. You're back to D.C. in just a few days. Only a few things waiting for you, such as funding the government, military funding, Ukraine aid, FEMA disaster relief. Uh, some of your colleagues like Durbin and, and Krishnamurthy and uh, uh, Kasten haven't been very hopeful about what can get accomplished. What's your thoughts? Well, I am very concerned about all those things that you've mentioned. But the most important thing is that we have to pass a budget. That is supposed to be done by the 30th of this month, not too many days. Um, and we have to pass 12 appropriations bills. We've only done one so far, and the opportunity to, to get it done is looking slim. And one of the things that's in the uh, future, I hope not, is a shutdown of the government. I'm hoping instead that what we're going to see is a continuing resolution so that we'll be able to at least kick the, the can down the road and get it done a little bit later. Well, and as you know, some of the Freedom Caucus members, Marjorie Taylor Greene, are giving a list of things that they just won't vote for any of this for unless they're there, such as no funding for Ukraine. But one of the things I want to ask you about is it seems that the latest demand now under McCarthy, who doesn't have much room, is that he begin an impeachment inquiry on President Biden. Um, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what evidence there is, but what is your thought about McCarthy taking that step to get a vote passed? Well, that's what Marjorie Taylor Greene has said. That is her bottom line. And of course, uh, because um, Kevin McCarthy has had to uh, give his soul to Marjorie Taylor Greene, we'll see what actually happens. It's a ridiculous proposal. And uh, certainly the Democrats are going to fight it tooth and nail. Um, you know, the idea of impeaching the, uh, the the greatest president of the United States, it's ridiculous. Republicans would raise questions about that, but I understand certainly uh, you're a Democrat yes. where you come from on that. Let's bring issues home now. Let's talk about the migrants. As you know, uh, Mayor Johnson has said, look, Chicago can't do this without federal help. I know one of your colleagues, Delia Ramirez, moving forward to try and get funding. What efforts are going on? Well, one of the things that we're really pushing, we had a wonderful roundtable with the uh, governor, the mayor, uh, Senator Durbin, um, and leaders of the, uh, the, the employer community saying they need workers and what the migrants want is work. They want a job. I have asked many of them, what do you want from the United States? And you know what they've said to a person? Give, I want a job, 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 job. So we have this mismatch right now of employers who need workers and workers who need jobs. And so we are putting together a coalition, including some um, governors from red states that want to see work permits made more available so people can take care of themselves. They don't want a handout. They want to be able to work and take care of their own families when they come here. So that is really the primary issue that we're working with right now to get the, um, the, the president and the administration to make more work permits available and more quickly. Uh, Medicare prescription drugs, you were at the White House recently, saw some photos there. And um, as part of the Inflation Reduction Act, there are now 10 drugs that are going to be negotiated with Medicare. Nikki Haley says it's communism. Um, but I'm, I'm just sort of curious, as these drugs proceed to be negotiated, is there anything negative? Will people not on Medicare have to pay more for them or something like that? What What are some of the Republicans saying that Democrats aren't? Well, it's you know, I, I was there in 2006 when Big Pharma, the pharmaceutical industry, got the Republicans, this was George W. Bush was the uh, was the president, to put into the creation of the Medicare Prescription Drug Act a prohibition that Medicare ever negotiate with the uh, to, for lower drug prices. Now let's remember, the Veterans Administration does in fact negotiate. And that's why the veterans, God bless them, 
get lower drug prices. We pay more as Americans, like three, two to three times more for the exact same drugs that are sold around the world, the same brand name, everything than anyone else. We are paying way too much. And so the uh, very rich, which they are, pharmaceutical companies are going to have to negotiate for lower prices. We're going to start with 10 drugs. Those drugs were were named. Um, and uh, hopefully, you know, many of your listeners are people that are going to benefit from that, from, uh, you know, di diabetes and heart yeah, disease. Blood clots and yeah, all sorts of uh, critical okay. drugs. So, so this is this is a really good idea. Finally, we're going to be able to um, have that kind of fair negotiation, just like the Veterans Administration does. A quick word on passports. I know that's been a concern for you and hearing from constituents, people having trouble getting their passports. Is that moving along at a better pace? Well, it's only moving along better because now people are traveling a little bit less, but we were doing up to 200 a month in our, just in our office alone. Here's the thing. People check your passports if you are traveling. And one of the things you want to look at is if you are traveling in other countries, including in European countries, some of the passports are requiring that that passport be valid for three to six months sometimes, and you can get to the airport. And if that is not part of your uh, passport, then you're not going to be able to, uh, to to get into that country. So, you know, check check that. Make sure all the little kids, everybody, your uh, family is uh, up to date. And uh, I know our office and most of the congressional office are happy to help. And just about a minute left, I do want to touch base on the accountability of online platforms. You've been working on that as well uh, as, as in some of your roles. Where does that stand today in terms of getting accountability for online efforts? Well, we certainly, what we want is privacy rights. You know, people are still fearful and they ought to be, or at least aggravated that when they go online, that the um, online companies get to get your information, more information than you want given. So I'm going to, I am continuing to fight for, for that, but we also, you know, want, want to make sure that there is clear transparency, that online platforms are held accountable for what they put online. We don't want them to put dangerous products online. We want to prohibit that and hold the, the Facebooks of the world, et cetera, uh, accountable for continuing to sell products that are dangerous even to our babies, we know that some children have died from dangerous products that are being sold on Facebook and other platforms. Well, we're out of time. I want you to come back soon. I want to talk about the junk fees efforts. I know you just were working with Buttigieg and others on getting rid of those fees that show up on hotel bills and airline bills and all of that. And uh, there's so much more to talk about. But Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, thank you for your time today. Have a great Sunday. I appreciate you. Thank you. You too. Look forward to later. Thank you. All right. And we'll be right back on WGN TV Political Report. Stay with us.